so these are some erythema nodosum that have popped up on my arms. You'll see that they have a white spot in the center. Uh, that's after several days worth of development. So when these first start, they're just small red bumps. And then they get bigger. And then when they reach, I guess like the biggest size that they're going to get, they get those white, white kind of bumps in the middle. I've got here one on the back of my arm. Um, and you can see smaller ones here. Uh, now these, they hurt pretty bad. They come up from the fat layer and they're like really hard nodules. So if I bump into anything or if I touch them, they're really sore, like uh, maybe like a really bad bruise. Or, um, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Only, it just, it's just a patch of inflammation. So it just hurts really bad and um, kind of itches sometimes. And then once it heals, see that ring is going to get wider. So the white spot in the center is going to get bigger and bigger until eventually the red is completely gone and the white kind of turns into a bruise. And then that bruise will last for maybe a week. So from the time that these pop up as small red dots and then they grow larger and then get the white spot in the center and then the ring and then that turns into a bruise. That whole process takes about two to three weeks. So it's, uh, it's a pretty painful process and it's pretty annoying. Um, I haven't really noticed anything that really makes it better except just general things to take care of myself and reduce inflammation and also things that can uh, kind of uh, just generally reduce my stress, like eating better and drinking a lot of water. Um, sometimes moving more helps, although really I think that these were brought on by walking too much. So uh, I spent uh, several months just sitting around and then all of a sudden decided, hey, I'm going to walk a couple miles and uh, that didn't work out so well. So I think that this is my body's reaction to uh, uh, overstressing or overtaxing my resources or who knows really even it could be because of the part of my cycle that I'm in um, because uh, before before their periods and after their ovulations women's uh, immune systems drop down to accommodate the potential pregnancy so that way it doesn't end up killing the baby because sometimes if the immune system is overactive in uh, it, it takes the chance of killing, you know, the, the developing embryo. So when women prepare for the menstrual cycles, one of the things that their body does is to drop down the immune system. So I'm not really sure what sort of factor that plays in autoimmune conditions because typically immune suppression is good with autoimmune conditions and that's what they're going for. So you would think that if my immune system were being suppressed, that that would be a good thing, but I typically end up with more flares, uh, more erythema nodosum, more just general malaise before my period. Uh, so that's definitely something to look into. If you go into infectious causation, uh, one of the theories is that autoimmune conditions are a reaction to a pathogen that has, you know, taken foot in the body, and that it's sort of a way of burning down the forest to get rid of the pathogen. And so if that's the case, and my immune system's dropping down, maybe it's trying to overcompensate because the, you know, the invading pathogen starts getting a foothold again during premenstrual time. I'm not really sure. So yeah, this is just me rambling, being kind of pissed off because I feel pretty shitty today and I kind of have a headache and I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've got to get ready for a trip that I'm making this weekend, uh, possibly early tonight. So. Anyway, yeah, just uh, trying to take this one day at a time. Figured I'd share some of the, the lovely issues that I have to deal with with the autoimmune condition. So, have a good day, you guys. It's gorgeous outside.